Hello and welcome to this recording on trust. The title of the today's session is Trusts Set Up by a Dido Variation, Tax and TRS Implications. I'm Barbara Gardner, Senior Consultant, Tax and Trust with Technical Connection. In fact, the question that prompted today's topic was in relation to the Trust Registration Service, or TRS as it is known, uh, namely, if a trust is created by a deed of variation, what is the date of the trust and who is the settler of this trust? Uh, it may be simple or not necessarily. So to start with, quick summary of what a deed of variation is. A deed of variation is an instrument in writing, it's a document in writing which is basically executed by someone who has inherited property whether under a will or in testacy and rather than accepting the inheritance they want to redirect it to somebody else this is done by a deed of variation which has a special place in tax legislation although this is sometimes called as a variation of a will it is important to remember that it's not so much variation of a will as such, because some provisions of a will cannot be altered. It has to be a variation of disposition of the property. So, for example, you can't vary the executors or, or uh, certain other admin provisions included in a will. What it is, is a variation of uh, disposition of a property. So what happens is that if I have inherited assets and I would rather pass them to my children or grandchildren or into a trust, then I execute a deed, which basically will say that instead of me receiving the funds, they are going on to certain trust and I am perfectly entitled to then set out the terms of the trust now the important thing to remember is that this needs to be done by the person who has inherited or anybody else who is affected by the deed of variation and obviously such a person must be over 18 and of sound mind so for example if the legacy was to a discretionary trust where it is not known exactly who are the beneficiaries because potentially there are future beneficiaries not yet born then it will not be possible to vary such a variation now what is good about the possibility of these variations and government has recognized this and occasionally they have tried to do something about it and change the legislation but so far nothing has happened so it still all works namely that if such a variation takes place within two years of the death of the uh, person who has died the state or whoever died without a valid will so that intestacy applies and it is not done for consideration then basically for inheritance tax purposes the deceased is treated as the set law or effectively the redirection of the property is read back into the will as if the deceased included it in his will now this is in effect a deeming provision or a legal fiction if you like because obviously we're not physically changing the will what happens is that the original beneficiary executes this document which says what should happen and then there is a deeming provision which says that the disposition is treated as if made by the deceased this is in section 142 inheritance tax act 1984 now so what's important to remember is that even though a trust is read into the will effectively it is actually made in a deed of variation and legally the person who is setting up a trust is the person who is making the variation person who inherited the assets to start with and is redirecting those assets to somebody else so remember 
the inheritance tax provision is a deeming provision. It's a legal fiction. What actually happens is that the original beneficiary or beneficiaries execute a deed of variation. There is no need generally to include executors or administrators in the deed of variation unless the amount of tax that is payable on that is increased. So if we look at this situation, we know that actually trust is created by deed of variation. So for the purpose of TRS, the date the trust is set up is actually the date of the deed of variation, even though it is the provisions are read into the will. So then the question is, who is the settler of this trust? And again, typically those familiar with deeds of variation understand that for inheritance tax purposes, the settler is treated, um, it is the deceased that is treated as the settler. This has obvious IHT implications because uh, if the deceased is treated as settler for IHT, it means that the person making the variation can, for example, be included as a beneficiary of the trust without there being a gift to reservation for inheritance tax. So this all works very well for inheritance tax planning. However, for general purposes, the question of who the settler is has to go back to the actual deed of variation, the person making the deed. So it is the person who actually executes the deed that is the settler for other tax purposes or for general purposes. Now, just a brief mention of who is the settler generally. We have definitions of settler for inheritance tax and for capital gains tax and for income tax purposes. And at the moment, they are pretty much similar. For inheritance tax, we have section 44 IHT Act, which says that it's any person by whom settlement was made directly or indirectly. And in particular, any person who has provided funds directly or indirectly. Now, for income tax and capital gains tax, we now have a um, uniform definition, which again, which refers to a person who has provided or undertaken to provide property directly or indirectly to the settlement. So again, if you look at actual situation, the person who has inherited funds is making a disposition, they're redirecting it to somebody else, they are the person who are providing funds, so they will be the settler. I mentioned uh, IHT, just to uh, sum up on deeds of variation, remember, for capital gains tax purposes, uh, generally speaking provided appropriate statement is is in the deed of variation uh, uh, the variation itself will not be a disposal for capital gains tax purposes however for the purpose of future capital gains tax liabilities it is uh, well the usual provisions will apply and the settler is the person making variation um, for income tax purposes in fact you cannot elect anything so uh, for income tax purposes, it is always the person who is making the variation that is the settler. And that may have implications, obviously, for subsequent income tax assessment on any income tax or chargeable event gains. So remember, for income tax purposes, the settler is the person making the variation. So looking at the registration of a trust on HMRC's TRS. Who is the settler? Well, as you can imagine what we've just said, well, the settler could be the deceased for IHT purposes or for all other purposes, it is the person or persons making the variation. In fact, the rules for TRS, which unfortunately haven't been clarified in the TRS manual. However, HMRC have expressed a, a view on this. And basically, for the purpose of TRS, the settler is any person receiving less 
and the, the deed of variation that they would have received under the will. So if it's just one person making a redirection of the legacy, it's going to be that person. If it's more than one, it will be more of them. However, if the variation is into a trust that has been set up under the will of the deceased already, then the set law of the trust will be also the deceased. So in effect, there'll be more than one set law. There will be set law the deceased because he settled the original trust and the set law for uh, other purposes, the person making the variation. So both of them will have to be named as the set law. Equally, if the redirection is into a trust created by the deceased prior to his death, like a pilot trust, for example, and then redirection it into that trust, then again, the set law for the purpose of TRS will be both the person making the uh, variation as well as the deceased. So this is the quick summary of who the set law is under a deed of variation. That's all for today. Thank you for listening.